as well. Great. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Women Veterans Alliance webinar. This is our unconference speaker webinar series, and I'm Melissa Washington, the CEO and founder of Women Veterans Alliance. And I'd like to welcome you all here today. Uh, we have a fantastic speaker um, for all of you. And if you haven't connected with us, feel free to do so on, on social media, uh, visit our website. Um, but if you're not aware, we had to unfortunately postpone our annual signature event, the end conference, which was supposed to take place next month in October. But we still wanted to bring you all the speakers that we had lined up for our awesome event. And um, this month, as you can see, we have five speakers lined up um, for the rest of this month. And if you're interested in any of those other um, speakers, you can uh, register the same place, womenveteransalliance.org um, forward slash webinars. You can sign up for those webinars as well. Um, also, too, if you do have questions for our speaker, feel free to put those in the chat um, and we'll answer, um, she'll answer those at the end. Um, we may go ahead and open up the, the, um, the phone at the end. So again, I'll depend. And um, so without, without further ado, um, this awesome woman, um, she spoke at our unconference last year, had a fantastic um, turnout and people loved her. I loved her. Um, she's done webinars for us before, and I, I can't say enough good things about this woman here. And um, so I just want to read, she is a veteran, she's an author, she's a mom, self-care advocate, educator, and I, mu I must say, you know, when, when you go to get your doctorate, let's make sure we introduce you correctly to, to Dr. <laughs> so yes, it, it, it's all yours. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. And welcome, everyone. I'm so glad that you're able to be here. And I just want to take this moment to, uh, to you know, give honor to God, give honor to Melissa, who is an amazing, dynamic woman for bringing together this amazing organization and the opportunity to be able to pour into women, both civilian and military. And so I am so excited um, with our topic today, Purpose Versus Pleasure six strategies to identify and realize your dreams. So as we get started, I just wanna share with you that I'm going to uh, take myself off video so that you all aren't distracted by my loud uh, kind of a personality and kind of take you on a little journey. This journey of strategies to identify and realize your dreams is definitely steps that I had to put in place for myself. So as I go throughout today's presentation for the next uh, 55, 50 minutes that we're together, I'm gonna share these strategies, share a little bit about my story, share some things that have inspired me that I've learned along the way, and then we're gonna have a couple of opportunities to be able to talk as well. All right, so if you're ready, I am going to go ahead and take myself off video and we're gonna get ready to rock and roll. All right then, okay, so. I'd like you to take a moment and look at these three questions. And I want you to be able to share, for those of you who may not have been on a Zoom before, and I think everyone under the sun has probably been on a Zoom, but I want you to look at these three statements and determine which of these statements, or it may be all of them, that relates to you. And put that in the chat. All right, one, you have more demands on your time. Two, you're losing sight of your life's ambitions. Three, you need to create time and space for what's important to you. So if you will find where that chat box is and go ahead and put in those numbers for what relates to you, and that'll help me to get an idea in terms of what are people juggling with. Um, it may feel like a struggle sometimes. Sometimes it may not feel as much like a struggle, but I think we all, whether we're military connected women or civilian women, have something that's going on in our life at all times and day. And uh, Karen shared, can we say one, two, and three? Absolutely, Karen. I definitely can say that I embrace all three of those. And of course, you know, different stages in our life certainly ends up impacting us in different ways. And then Jan uh, mentioned, hey there, Jan, glad to see you. Hey there, Dolores. Uh, she says, number three, needing to create time and space for what's important. And that also rotates with Number one, the demand for time. So it's interesting. I think you all will see in the chat that several of you share some of the same experiences. And so that's what life is all about. Being able to determine what is it that we're experiencing at that time, how to address those experiences, and being able to move forward. 
So what I'm looking forward to today in our time together is being able to share six strategies to identify and realize your dream. And the strategies that I'll introduce in this session will accomplish three objectives, identify your tasks and goals, better organize your time, and be able to stay on track. Now, who here can definitely relate to that? I'm sure we all can at some point in time, because especially for those of us who are military, who are on this uh, webinar at this time, that's what occurs, right? In our experience, we, we are trained, we have a mission to accomplish, we set out the task conditions and standards to complete the mission, and then we move on about our merry way. Sometimes what happens though, is as we become civilians and we embrace additional goals and responsibilities, things begin to get hectic. So in that state of mind, I would like to take a moment and help us all to relax. Um, there's a lovely lady who afforded me the opportunity to do resilience training for the American Red Cross, Ms. Karen, and Karen's on the line. Hey, Karen. And uh, one of the things that we have really encouraged veterans to do in the groups that we've served is to be aware of mindfulness. So as we get started today on our journey together, I'm gonna take you through a breathing activity. Breathing more, stress less, keeps the pressure down. And we're gonna use the 478 breathing technique to lower your stress level. Now, of course, you came to this webinar probably feeling no stress whatsoever, but with this being in the middle of most people's workday, I want you to be fully present in our experience today. And we're gonna do that by opening up with this relaxation exercise. So I have it here on the screen to get you oriented. For those of you who feel comfortable closing your eyes, feel free to do so, or just um, fix your gaze on something in front of you. But I want you to close your mouth and inhale through your nose to a silent count of four. You're going to hold your breath for a silent count of seven. You're going to exhale completely through your mouth to a silent count of eight. And then you're gonna repeat the cycle three more times for a total of four breaths. And I will walk you through this, okay. Relax, you may be seated or laying down, wherever you feel most comfortable. Close your mouth, inhale through your nose, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, last time, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, exhale. Wonderful, wonderful. It is so important that as we go through our daily activities that we take time to center ourselves, to relax, so that we can be fully present in bringing ourselves to the table. So, many of you may be wondering, who is Janae Bishop? Well, as Melissa shared earlier, I am a veteran. As a matter of fact, I joined the Army as an enlisted soldier, met my husband, William, on both of us on the plane from the MEP station in Fort Dix, New Jersey, going to Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And I must say, after being in basic training, I decided I'm going to become an officer. So I was a reserve uh, soldier at the time and came back, continued college, and completed the uh, final two years of ROTC. Absolutely loved my experience while in the military. When I exited the military with an honorable discharge, I, uh, my husband was still active duty. He was a signal officer. We spent some time being stationed on Fort Bragg and both of our sons, Matthew uh, to the left in the red shirt and Brian, my older son in the white t-shirt, they were both born on Fort Bragg. And it was an amazing experience. And as you can see in the upper right corner, once I left the military, I did spend some time working in nonprofits with young teen moms, as well as uh, individuals who had substance issues and kids who were survivors of sex abuse. But with the master's degree that I earned, I 
went into education, was a middle, high, and alternative school guidance counselor. And before I uh, retired early from my career, I had been a principal of two schools. And so that is the background of who I am professionally, but I am proud to say that my parents who also live here in Somerville, well, they live in South Carolina, have been married 58 years. I have two amazing brothers and nieces and nephews who all make up who I am. And so here you have the picture of my family and I on the family vacation, and I loved going on vacation. And then in May 2016, my husband of 28 years at the age of 52 passed away of a fatal heart attack in his sleep. At that point, we were both preparing for an early retirement. He was a middle school assistant principal. My sons had just left home. Hooray! And my husband and I were planning on uh, being, at, we were foodies, and we were going to travel and eat our ways into uh, retirement in our golden years. But I had plans for us and God had the final decision as is the case in all of our lives. And so that began the process of me deciding what to do next. And so in Evans, Georgia, where I had spent a lot of my years as an educator, I decided in the 2016, 2017 school year, what am I gonna do next? And so many women, those who are particularly in the military, transitioning out of the military into civilian life, have to make a similar decision. But I suddenly found myself in the position of being in midlife, suddenly being a widow, having an empty nest, changing careers, relocating. It was a basket of upheaval. And in the course of reading things to motivate and inspire me, uh, the counselor side of me never gets away, I came across this quote about Steve Jobs. Did you all know that Steve Jobs was only 56 years old when he passed away of can cancer? And so this middle quote here, if today were the last day of your life, would you want to do what you are about to do today? Well, many of us may have had jobs that we absolutely loved and had jobs that we might have struggled in. And for some of us, we may even have had opportunities where we thought we weren't living our life's ambition. But as you know, Steve Jobs, uh, the creator of Apple, definitely had a stellar life. And so when I saw this quote, it certainly resonated with me because I'm sure on May 15th, that Sunday, when my husband and I sat and talked for three hours about what we wanted to do the next weekend, we had no idea that the next day would change our lives forever. And so when you see that quote, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition, everything else is secondary. And then right over there to the right, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life has been a hallmark for me moving forward. So we are here today for purpose versus pleasure, six strategies to identify and realize your dream. And so there I was in the fall of 2016, a school principal and deciding would I stay doing what I'm doing. And for any of you who are in education um, or other jobs where you have a very hectic schedule, you'll notice that in your personal life and in your professional life, things get pretty busy. With ever more demands on our time, it can be all too easy to lose sight of your life's ambition. But that needn't be the case. So today, I'll introduce to you to identify and realize your dreams. You know, we live in a fast-paced world. Many of us are on call 24-7 with a myriad of demands on our time. While for others, there is a relentless pressure for ever greater achievements in our personal and professional lives. But with this level of busy comes to a lengthy to-do list. We can lose sight of our life ambitions as our sense of self becomes tangled up in the daily grind and ultimately gets lost under the piles of stuff, commitments, routines, and habits. I'm here to share with you all today that like myself, we need to tip the scales in the favor of creating time and space for that which is important. It may require learning a new skill or completing a work project. These six strategies today will help you identify your tasks and goals better organize your time and stay on track. It's a simple process that requires you to stop and look at your schedule to see what you can tweak. You can then identify what is holding you back. So I encourage each and every one of you, feel free to take pictures, screenshots or notes as we move along. So as you see on the screen, number one, simplify your commitment. It's good to regularly take a step back to assess your commitment. Listing all your weekly and monthly tasks is a useful way of doing this. Seeing everything written down will help you to establish what's important. 
Protecting your time is a great habit because when you remove the stuff that no longer adds value, you can make space for the things that bring you the greatest joy. This is a good time to interject a friend that I met for the first time last week, retired Colonel Jan Schreiner. And she, we were talking about burning the candle on both ends and she humorous, humor, humorously shared, yes, you burn the candle on both ends and then you have melted wax on your, on your feet below. And that is so true. I, some say, have achieved a lot, but it was because I really enjoyed the race and also because I thought I would have so much time to enjoy my family and my marriage on the other end of those achievements. And it's so important to realize that now is the only thing that we have any guarantee of. And so please do not burn the candle on both ends. Look at your schedule and eliminate your commitments. I'm sorry, evaluate your commitments, of course. Sometimes it's hard to drop things from your schedule, and I realize that as a guidance counselor, as a school principal, um, and of course, as an officer in the military, I was a finance officer and a public affairs officer. Sometimes your schedule just gets busier and busier, and you have a fear of letting others down. Remember, your time is precious, and if you're feeling tired, overwhelmed, or unable to pursue your personal goals, something needs to change. And don't wait till tomorrow to change it. Do it today. People are usually understanding if you're honest about how you feel. Another way to simplify is by combining tasks and commitments. For example, you can get off the bus a stop earlier, thus linking your commute with exercise, or you can listen to an inspiring podcast, ebook, or even a language class while doing your weekly shopping. Looking at new and creative ways to complete your daily tasks can make the mundane feel joyful. And a change in lifestyle is the perfect way to shake up your daily routine and view life from a fresh perspective. Some have asked, how do you then simplify your commitments? So Rob Peters is quoted as saying, success is the sum of all the small and large commitments you make and keep day in and day out. So many of you uh, have achieved a lot of great things in your life, both personally and professionally. And as I went on my own experience, transitioning from the military to civilian life, from being single to widow to um, experience life as a, as a woman in midlife and also creating a new career for myself, which I love dearly, it required that I got organized. And oftentimes when you're someone in the military in a leadership position, you have staff that can help you along the way. When you suddenly venture out into becoming an entrepreneur, you are an organization of one. So it's so important that you simplify your commitments Decide those things that you can do and create that master list. Determine from that master list what are the things that you can do monthly in order to move the gauge forward. And then determine what things you can do weekly and what things you can do daily. So at this time, take a moment and think about what is something that you have on your master list that may be a career goal, a personal goal, that you would like to be able to look at in the next month. Just take one second and think about that. You'll notice for those who participated in the previous webinar, you know, I shared about the dimensions of wellness and the different areas of our life and, and living holistically. And I spent so much time in my own life focusing on personal, um, I focused on personal goals, I would like to say to a great extent, but most of my energies definitely went to career goals and educational goals. And so uh, recently, one of my sons had shared that I was a workaholic. I did not realize I was a workaholic because I loved what I was doing, but there were so many experiences that I was not fully present with my son. So when you look at this slide, consider some of the things that you have already on your career goal list, personal goal list, family goal list, and could be miscellaneous, maybe just identify one thing in each of those areas that you might be able to initiate this month and be able to follow through for the remainder of this year. Isn't it something that uh, this year is almost over? We're already in September, oh my goodness. The second strategy is to establish your goals. And so I want to be able to, to just pinpoint how key it is to be able to identify what your goals are. And so I'm encouraging you, and this came from teachingmoments.com, how you can establish your goals would be easily done by looking at these four questions. 
All right, challenge. Why do you want it? Define the desire or challenge that is facing you. What is the goal? What do I want? Write down the goal you want to achieve. Number three, action steps. How will you get it? Your specific action plan to reach your goal. And then the target dates. When do I want it? The completion date for each of your goals. For myself, as I was transitioning both out of the military and then also in this new journey in my life, um, the challenge for me was having to redesign my life and I didn't expect to have to do that at this stage. But the one constant in life, everyone, is change. And so when I made the decision um, that my desire was to live my life more being in the present for my family, my friends, and to do things that I feel even more joyful with, that was a master list item for me. The goal, what do I want? I wanted to be closer to my family. I wanted to be able to create a business that I can serve other individuals holistically. I wanted to be able to have the freedom to be able to travel and to see my sons and friends. I wanted to be able to develop action steps to reach each of those goals. And that's what I did throughout the remainder of 2017, 2018, and 2019. And then things began to fall into place in 2020. So establish your goals. And I want to make sure that everyone realizes that while taking a little time to simplify your commitments, it's valuable to look at your goals. Getting to the end of ironing a pile of clothes isn't a goal, but I'm sure we all can relate to that, nor is clearing your email inbox. We're talking about the longer term, defining aims, like training for a marathon, completing a work project, or learning a new skill. I'm encouraging each and every one of you to take a moment to list them in order of your priority. That way, you'll know where to start. The problem many of us face, and I was guilty of this as well, is that we try to work on too many goals at once. I used to um, really be thrilled to identify myself as, as a multitasker. And then I found myself getting burned out and then realizing that there were many things that I did not complete that were such heartfelt goals for me. So I encourage everyone that can feel overwhelming and often prevent us from growing. So work on one goal at a time, and this will give you a clearer focus and improve your chances of success. So take a moment and just kind of ponder on that. What might be one goal, just one, that you would be interested in working on or focused on working on, whether it's career oriented or entrepreneurial, whether it's your personal goal, whether it's your family goal, whether it's something miscellaneous, think it. That's the first step. The third strategy is give your time a little structure. Oh my goodness. How many of us just feel all over the place sometimes? And if you're in a relationship and if you're a caretaker or you have children in the home and you may be involved in church, other community activities, but you only have 24 hours in a day and we feel stressed and stretched, all right? If you've completed the first two steps that I mentioned, and, and of course, just maintain that in your mind's eye, the simplifying your commitments, establishing your goals, you will have simplified your routine and commitments to a manageable amount, and you would have identified a realistic goal. So at this stage, many of us get caught up in everyday tasks and commitments and neglect our goal, putting it off until tomorrow, before we know it, six months have passed. There are several ways to prevent this from happening and you'll need to establish what works for you. A good habit is to set aside time in the morning for your goal and complete every day task in the afternoon. A lot of research suggests just identifying three goals for the day to focus on. So you may say, okay, this goal is for career, this one is for personal, this one is for family. And maybe rotate those things around. After all, in the late afternoon, that will probably require less attention and can be tackled. And some of those menial tasks around your house can be tackled later on. And that was a big lesson for me. I used to like to do all of my home related things, tackling that in the morning. And I'm a morning person. And as a morning person, that's when I'm the most energized. And some of my clients will probably say that I'm too energized, especially when I'm doing my coaching calls. But I love the morning. Uh, for those of you who are Army, you may recall years ago, there was a commercial that the Army does more before nine o'clock than most people do all day. And I certainly attest to that. Huh! For all of those Army people out there. <laughs> I want you to take a look at this. 
Have you ever heard of the idea of time blocking as a simple, effective time management? Well, in the center, what most people do, that was me. I had things scattered all throughout the day, wherever it could be plugged in. Then I'd find by the end of the week that there were some things that weren't finished, other things that I was supposed to start. And the more I read about time management and achieving things in an efficient manner, I kept coming across this concept of time blocking. Well, look there on the right. Time blocking is when you identify a certain time during the course of the day that is just for one specific activity. So rather than being scattered out throughout the day, as you can see in those color codes, this particular person did time blocking where green was uh, the time that they had assigned to creating client proposals, uh, the red was email and messages, yellow was social media, uh, gray was lunchtime, um, the, the uh, tan color was meetings, and blue was time that they set aside to prepare for tomorrow. Well, as you can see, so often things can get out of control. But if you have your time situated every day where you are working on those hot items that you need to get completed based on the work that you do or the goal that you're wanting to achieve, you will find that you will achieve so much more efficiently the things that are your heartfelt goals. So strategy three, give your time a little structure. Now, once you've given your time a little bit of structure, one of the things that I had to work on as I was juggling building a business, um, establishing clients, going out and participating in volunteerism, networking, speaking, was that at the end of the week, all I wanted to do was sit down, eat some ice cream and binge on Netflix. And then I realized it was Sunday afternoon and I had not really decompressed from the previous week in order to prepare for what's coming up. So here's a suggestion for you. I call it the weekly review, okay? At the end of the week, whether that's a Saturday and now I, I tend to do that on a Sunday because it really prompts my mind to get ready for the week that's coming up. Okay, spend 10, almost 10 minutes to declutter and have a mind dump. Tidy your workspace, file away your notes, get all your tasks out of your head and into your task management system. For those of you who still use a paper calendar like I do, I do, and I color code, but I also use my Google calendar and I'm able to color code there as well. And that's a task management system as well as a calendar. But I keep um, a notepad in my car and I also keep it next to my bedside so that as thoughts come up, I get them out of my head. And then also spend about 10 to 20 minutes reviewing your calendar, review your completed tasks and notes and goals, compare your plan to what actually happened, what went well, what didn't. You know, when we were in the military, we would assess in our staff meetings what went well, what didn't, and then we would create a plan for accomplishing the mission as we move forward. And then also spend about 20 to 35 minutes to set your current um, on goals and projects for the week coming up. What progress have you made on each of your top priorities? What needs to be updated? What needs to happen next? And then plan the week ahead. What are your most important tasks based on what you did not accomplish last week, but you still need to accomplish in order to move your goal forward? And write them down in the calendar. Write them down. When we do that brain dump and get it out on paper, we are able to be more clear and structured in achieving them. And then finally, if time permits, but it's a great thing to do, think bigger. Review your someday maybe projects list. What things are you excited about right now? Is it writing a book? Is it launching your business? Is it seeing your kid go off to college? Is it adopting a child? What is your big someday maybe? What things do you want to learn in order to prepare for those next steps that you have moving forward? That weekly review is a great way to have the staff meeting with yourself. Strategy four, involve other people. When I moved here in 2017, July 2017, so I've been living in Somerville, South Carolina now for three years, it was a big adjustment. I've never lived here before, never lived in a place surrounded by so many family members. Um, I was born and raised in New York City, even though both my parents are from South Carolina. I'm the oldest in my family and the only girl. So as such, I have been accustomed to not involving other people. I just determine what it is that I need to do, what's the plan to get it done, and I rock and roll with it. 
And of course, when I became an officer, when I was a school administrator, then I had a staff to be able to assist me in being able to accomplish the mission. However, when I became a solopreneur, as many of you may be as well, I realized, oh my, I need a business coach. I need a marketing coach, a social media coach. And I couldn't afford all of those things until the business generated money. But then I realized I had to invest in myself because this is a sobering thought. I have more years behind me than in front of me. And my why was for my sons to be able to see it's never too late to actualize your dream. For my family members and friends to realize it's never too late to recreate your life. I wanted my life to be a testimony for others as they were moving forward. So the research definitely supports that being accountable to someone is extremely valuable. Saying what you'd like to achieve to another person brings it to life. And you may even find you can support one another with your aims. Perhaps suggest to a colleague or friend that they regularly ask you how you're doing. It will help you to remain focused and motivated. Plus, you'll have the added benefit of someone to talk to. It's great to have someone on your side wishing you to succeed. So remember, accountability is not a bad thing. Actions toward or involving others that reflect the integrity of the person you want to be. That's accountability. And again, it's never too late to design and create the life of your dreams. Identify your goals, activate those goals and those actions, and realize your dreams. Strategy five, figure out your time wasters. Oh my goodness. We all have things we can't resist checking. News updates, email, social media. It's important to establish your weaknesses to ensure they don't distract you. Now, I don't know if we have any millennials on the line, but I know my sons who are millennials, they live on their cell phone, on their uh, computers. And it's very interesting to see how relationships develop in this day and age based on all of the social media, even dating, as you know, is based on social media. So. Here we are in this day and age where we have all of these distractions that can hold us back from identifying and realizing our dreams. I want you all to embrace the fact that you are responsible for your day. Plan particular times for these things, whether it's time blocking, whether it's another measure that you're using, the time blocking is what has been helpful to me. But find that way that you'd be able to achieve your goals on a regular basis. That way, it will be seen as a reward when you do resort back to social media and these weapons of mass distraction, all right? Social media and online and emails, those things are distracting. So here's some suggestions that have been a blessing in my life. You know, have a day of week where you unplug. I know it's kind of scary, isn't it? But there was a time when we didn't have cell phones or notifications reminding us of different things occurring. Also, make it an opportunity where when you are out with friends that you are fully present. Have you ever had that experience of being out with individuals and they are on their phone as much as they're talking with you? That is a distraction and it is a, has a severe impact on our relationships. So if you find it difficult to avoid procrastinating, there are things you can try. These range from putting your phone on silent or out of view to turning it off. Also, cutting out the distractions will help you to concentrate and being aware of your weaknesses will enable you to stay on track. So beware of those weapons of distraction. And here are a few of the top 10 time wasters that I came across in the literature. Waiting for inspiration. We're sitting back waiting for someone else to light our fire. Just do it. And that does kind of tie in with uh, number two, procrastination. Tomorrow's not promised, everyone. This moment in time is the only thing that's guaranteed. That's why it's called the present. When we woke up this morning, our present, we realized we received two gifts when we opened our left eye and our right eye. Don't procrastinate. Embrace the moment that is now. Worrying is another time waster. It makes you not move forward. Stop trying to please everybody. I don't know, am I the only one who was a yes person? And now that I am living a life where I don't have the cushion 
of falling back and having my family here to, to do the cooking for me or to plan the next family trip, I realized that no is a complete sentence. Just say no, because the time that you give away, that is priceless and you don't get it back. You and I, here's a newsflash, have the same 24 hours as Oprah Winfrey, Zuckerberg, uh, Warren Buffett. We all have the same 24 hours. And the difference between you achieving what you want to achieve and what they do to achieve what they want to achieve is what we all do in our 24 hours. Stop surfing the internet. Only block out a certain period of time to do that. Stop repeating the same mistakes. We're human beings. Learn from the mistakes and keep moving forward. Don't be stifled by perfectionism. Have your priorities set. Don't lack priorities. That which we don't write down as a priority ends up consuming us. And here's something I struggled with. Being the oldest in my family, one of the older grandchildren, is the fear of failure. Believe it or not, I used to be guilty of not wanting to take a chance to do something new because I didn't want to fail at it. But you know what? Every great achievement that anybody ever accomplished had some bumps in the road along the way. As Einstein said, uh, you know, it took a thousand times for him to get through creating uh, his experiment, his light bulb. And if he, had, if he had stopped at attempt 99, where would we be today? And number 10, you're probably wondering, don't become a zombie. How is that a time waster? That kind of goes back to number one and two and three. Um, don't just go through life just walking and not being engaged. This is the one life that we have in the way that we're living it. And when we transition to the next level, we don't know what to expect. So make the best of this life right now. Create a living legacy for your family and friends and everyone, and especially, most importantly, yourself to enjoy this moment in time. Strategy number six, celebrate your achievements. You know, oftentimes, especially when you are a highly driven person, some people might describe it as a type A personality. We just go, go, go. And like myself, I would uh, strive for that next degree, for that next position. Um, and it was exhilarating. But I realized after um, our life changed with the passing of my husband and the empty nest of my sons and all of the things that I had to do to redesign and reclaim my life, that the small things can also be celebrated. Like when I got my health in check, when I decided to be able to create an opportunity to help and serve others in a different way. I just wanna share with all of you out there, just decide to do it, just go for it. It's important to take time out to acknowledge your achievements, whether you've completed a task or reached an objective, stopping to reflect can be empowering. Resting your body and mind will also prepare you for the next stage. I oftentimes didn't do that. And so I gained weight. Um, my hair also became thinner. Um, I, 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 did, I just was losing joy. And of course, as I was going through the grief process, I thought I could handle it all on my own. And I'm here to share with you all, grief doesn't just happen from the loss of a loved one. It could be the loss of a career, the loss of family members, of friends, of the life that you once knew. And so I went through not just one grief recovery program, but two. And yes, they were based on grief of the death of a loved one. But I'm here to share with you all, reach out to your support system, reach out to counselors, therapists, coaches, so that you can be able to identify your goals and realize your dreams by having that support of people who can keep you accountable. Celebrating also creates a healthy cycle and motivates us to push farther. Even small rewards like spending time with your family or relaxing with a good book will help you when you're distracted. So remind yourself of your reward for finishing. We often move on to the next thing and fail to acknowledge how hard we've worked or how far we have come. So stop, be fully present and enjoy your success. You deserve it. And there are so many people looking at you and they're thinking if, if they did it, I can do it. So in summary, here are the six strategies to identify and realize your dreams. Strategy number one, simplify your commitments. Number two, establish your goals. Number three, give your time a little structure. Number four, involve other people. 
Number five, figure out your time wasters. And number six, celebrate. Celebrate your achievements. I used to wait for my family to do that for me because I did not need outside accolades. And then when the structure of my family changed, I realized, wow, just getting up each morning, being able to enjoy a cup of tea, writing in my gratitude journal, or walking is a beautiful way to celebrate that day first thing. And so my second poll question to you are these. You have a, I want you to note, and you can put it in the chat box. I would love that because we've had some individuals to join us since we began. Which of these do you relate to? And enter one, two, or three in the chat box. Number one, you have a section of your time that you can adjust. Number two, you have a goal you can begin addressing in September. Number three, you have an idea on using time blocking to add structure to achieve your goal. Just a few seconds as we begin to wrap up and before we go to questions and just having a discussion. Awesome, awesome. Okay, I see here a number of ones. You have a section that you can work on. Fabulous, fabulous. And you have an idea on using time blocking. Terrific. Okay, Shakia, you have a goal you can begin addressing in September. Awesome, awesome. Yes, think it and it shall be. Fantastic, fantastic. And you know, several of you have mentioned there's a time that you can adjust. Yes, for me, that time was in the morning. I am a, I wake up early, I have my Alexa play some inspirational music, it gets me up, I get my exercise in, do some Pilates, do some push-ups, and I am off and running. This is absolutely awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, Dolores, Seanette, yes, number two, you have a goal, I want to hear about it. And Karen, yes, 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 fabulous, fabulous. Okay, so as we continue moving forward, gotten some strategies. So now I pose a question to you again from Steve Jobs, who left this earth at 56. If today were the last day of your life, what you want to do, you're about to do today. And you can just think about that for a moment. Here's another lady from technology, Cheryl Sandberg. And I shared with individuals that uh, as I, before I had launched doing what I do with my company, Boots to Breakthrough. I read the book Option B that was written by Sheryl Sandberg. And in her 40s, her husband died suddenly on a family vacation uh, in the gym while he was working out. Turns out he had a heart attack and he was in his 40s. And so when I read this quote, it helped to resonate my life as I moved through 2017. You are not born with a fixed amount of resilience. Like a muscle, you can build it, draw on it when you need it. In that process, you will figure out who you really are and you just might become the very best version of yourself. I'm here to share with all of you, it is not over. We all are on a journey to create the very best version of ourselves. And so for myself, the next stage of my journey was becoming an optimal health coach, where I'm so thrilled that I work to be able to save lives. And yes, it is different than when I was working with young mothers and parenting or individuals who had substance abuse issues or working in the school setting. But guess what, it is all still service. And many of you who have been in the military or who have worked as civilians in serving others, you too are saving lives. So I help people build resilience and create the lives they want through their macro habits of health. And so the research shows that the habits of health fall in these six categories, healthy weight, healthy eating and hydration, healthy motion, healthy sleep, healthy mind, healthy surroundings. When my, when my life coach and health coach came into my life, and I've had several coaches along the way, but what was transformative for me was as I worked on my health and well-being, becoming more aware of all of these six areas so that I can create that better version of myself. And in so doing, I had the opportunity to to meet other individuals who also went through a transformation, like David, who lost 200 pounds as a chiropractor, and Dr. Joe, who's a cardiologist, and he lost 123 pounds, and Linda, 
lost 80 pounds and she lost hers in seven months. I want all of you to realize that part of achieving our goals and realizing those, so those things that we hold so close to us also includes achieving a healthy weight. Because when you do that, you reduce or eliminate medications, you reverse medical conditions, and you create a vibrant health that adds to your longevity. Did you all know that of the 200 million people in America, two thirds of them are overweight and half of that two third number are obese? These are some critical times, especially the times that we're living in at this time. And so here I am on the left. When I came down here in Somerville, South Carolina, and of course, um, eating myself through the grief. And then I slowly but surely started to work on myself. And now as an optimal health coach, I pay it forward by transforming people's lives and by then also developing and training and supporting other health coaches and those who are interested in becoming a health coach to develop their own second income stream and reinvent themselves. It is so key that we all remember it's never too late to recreate ourselves. And the four components that I share with everyone involves health coaching, the habits of health system, those six areas that I shared with the area, I connect them with the community of support and through the structured eating plan, they're able to manage their weight. So I encourage each and every one of you, your purpose versus your pleasure, your life versus the life of your dream. Embrace these six strategies to just begin launching and realizing your dreams. I am just so thankful for being able to be here today Thank you so much, Melissa, for this opportunity to serve. And um, I wanted to make sure that I left a few minutes just to be able to engage in discussion. So I am going to, uh, let's see here. Um, I'm gonna put that on the screen. I'm going to get off of video and I would like to open it up for any discussion that individuals may, may want to be engaged in. Matter of fact, I guess a good thing to do would be to go back to the chat. And, oh, thank you, Dolores. Yes, it was, it was quite a transformation. Thank you so much, uh, Jan. I appreciate, uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, wow, yes, Jan was, thank you. I'm so glad Jan was on. She was the one that gave me that uh, wax dripping and crippling your sneakers analogy. Fabulous, fabulous. All right, so in this time, uh, let's see here. You would think I would have mastered being able to do the Zoom at this time, but that's okay. We are going to rock and roll with this and open it up for, for discussions. Hey, everybody, I am back for our last couple of minutes here. So I'd like someone to be able to share with us, and you don't have to come on screen. You can just uh, remove yourself off of audio. Um, on audio, stay on audio, but not on video, and share what is one thing you might want to do and start in September. Believe it or not, we only have a few months left for 2020, and 2020 began uh, as an opportunity to have new and greater vision. We were all excited in January 2020, and then uh, so many thousands of people have lost loved ones, have lost jobs, and this 2020 has become an opportunity for us to reflect on our lives and to look at what's really important as we move forward. So I'm excited to hear what is a goal that you have in moving forward uh, in the next month, uh, this month, or in the next couple of months. All right, I think you all, uh, oh, <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, um, I'm going to stop, I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna stop screen sharing. All right, so that I can uh, see who all we have on here. And oh, fantastic, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, so who can share with us um, maybe a goal that they have completed in the last several months that they feel like a rock star. Thanks, Jan, for that shout out. Who has a, something that they've achieved in the last several months and now they are amped up? 
moving forward through the rest of this year and embracing 2021. We have a lot of shy people out there. <laughs> Hi, so I'm Shakia. I'm calling Hi, Sha through the phone. So one goal I had set for myself was to become a homeowner. So last month I closed on the house, had it built, and I moved in. Oh, hey, Shakia. Hey, this is a hand clap. <laughs> That is amazing. Oh my goodness. So Shakia, what was the biggest thing that you had to overcome on stepping out in faith like that? Thanks today for the thumbs up. I think for me, the biggest fear was being able to do it on my own because I'm a single parent. I have three kids. Oh yeah. So I was really nervous about being a homeowner on my own. But once I got over that fear, I'm okay. Oh my gosh. Nothing to do it, right? Right. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. And so Shakia, what do you think is the message, the beautiful message that sends to your kids that you had a goal, you had an action plan, you achieved the goal, and now 2020, this is huge to become a homeowner in 2020. What's the lesson for your kids in this living legacy that you're creating? So one lesson that I think it taught my kids is that you have to have faith over fear. So, and to, even if you're scared of something, do it with the fear. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, thank you so much, Shakia, for sharing that. And thank you, uh, Karen, for, for that note that you put in your chat. Who else had a milestone that they completed? And uh, yes, congratulations. Who else had a milestone that they completed in the last couple of months or something that they're working towards moving forward? Hi, this is Sharon McDougall. Hey, Sharon. Hi. With your <laughs> high energy self, you got me all hyped. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I completed writing my first children's book, which I've oh. been putting off. And, you know, with the pandemic, now I have time, right? Oh. So it gave me the chance to write it. It's not completed, like printed yet, but I wrote it. And I have an illustrator working on the illustrations right now. And so hope I'm hoping by the end of the year it'll be printed. If not, maybe the first quarter of the, cause you know, it depends on when he can finish the illustrations. So oh I'm very excited God. about it. That is so huge. And yes, Dolores, I agree. Faith over fear. Sharon, how long did you hold this dream of writing this book? That's awesome. It's been since 2013. <laughs> that, that is huge. <laughs> So oh the, the pandemic was kind of a blessing, even though it's been horrible being stuck at home, but it gave you time to sit down, think about things, and it gave you time to actually put pencil to paper, you know? Yes. Oh, my gosh. And so can you share with us, um, I think, oh, we got seven minutes left, okay. Can you share with us, uh, Sharon, um, what inspired you toward the children book as to, you know, in, in lieu of any other type of book. I'm, I'm so excited. To I thought it would be easier to do that first and then work on my biography, autobiography later, because that's going to take a lot more time to write, of course. Yeah. But I did find out you can record. There's a system where you can just re talk and record, and then they can just print it from you talking. So that'll make it easier than actually typing it all out, right? Oh, my God. So I may get to that before the year is over. So, oh. so I don't need an illustrator for that, right? The illustrator is taking up more time for the children's book, which I didn't even think would take that long, but that's what's yeah. holding up my children's book. But it didn't yeah. take long to write the book at all, oh but going God. through the whole process. But anyway, um, so yeah, I did that instead of, because it seemed easier to do that first. And I love to read to children, so it kind oh. of just fell in place. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the transparency that you thought it was going to be easier. <laughs> That is amazing. Oh Thank my you. So yes, be on the lookout for uh, Suit Up for Launch with Shay. It'll be the title of the book. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, and, uh, and Melissa, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at the um, last in-person convention, Melissa had a section where veteran women who were authors were able to display their book. So it looks like, Melissa, you may have another one uh, to be displayed. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so, and so, um, is there anyone else? Yes. Turn it back. Yes. Oh, Cheryl, hey there, Cheryl. Hi, my name is Cheryl Shaper. 
And what I learned to do because of the COVID-19 was actually virtual interviews for my online TV series, Vets Helping Vets TV. So now instead of having to go up to a studio in Palo Alto, I can do Zoom interviews and then the guests provide B-roll and, and uh, digital photographs and we are creating half hour episodes. So I'm still creating Community Educational Access TV. So that's what oh. I learned to do because I was devastated when we had a shoot canceled in March. And then in March, later in March, I discovered the Zoom. And when I saw what Zoom could do, Zoom literally changed my life because all of us actually that are on this call, we've all been impacted by Zoom because now it's the only way we can get together. So that's my story. So thank you for your encouraging words and making us look at things a little bit differently. Oh, Cheryl, congratulations. Oh my gosh, that is huge. And, and Cheryl, um, like Shakia and Sharon, can you share with us what inspired you to do that work? And then we're gonna turn it over to Melissa to close us out. Well, actually, uh, Melissa Melissa has actually been a guest host on the show several times. I love oh. the WDA and the mission of WDA. But long story, very short. I'm a retired EDD vet rep, and in that capacity, many years ago, I started Veterans Helping Veterans TV. But because of technology and changes at the studio in the last five years, I have learned to become an independent film maker. So now I tell more veteran stories through the interview process. So thank you. Ah, oh, fabulous, fabulous. Oh my, thank you so much, Cheryl, Sharon, and Shakia for sharing your milestones. And truth be told, there are a couple of other individuals in the audience that I know have made milestones, but they're a little more shy, so I won't call them out. But I am Dr. Janae Bishop. Um, please feel free to reach out to me if I can ever support you in any way. Uh, my cell number is 706-414-4361. Um, of course, you know, when this is uploaded on YouTube, you'll see that. Or, uh, yeah, just text me. Call me, text me. Melissa, you are amazing. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to kick off your September speakers. I just feel so blessed. And again, thank you for all that you do for women veterans and your organization being such a valuable resource. Blessings to you and blessings and abundance to everyone. Thank you so much, Janae. This was so insightful and I know everybody got a lot out of it. And I, I, I feel we have a lot of women that are inspired and ready and ready. So thank you. Thank you for inspiring them and continuing to inspire me as well. So and again, um, like was mentioned, this will be um, on YouTube. So once we get it up there, we'll um, share the link. Um, and again, Dr. Bishop, thank you so much. Everybody just keep creating, creating. Create Thank your you. dream. Create. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great weekend, everyone. Blessings and abundance to you. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you.